Hey there guys, Bastowo here. Uh, before I even tell you what I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to say sorry for the audio quality. I'm recording this on my headset, which has not the greatest microphone. Anyways, what we're doing today is talking about Avon's newest half-face respirator modular particulate protective thingamabob. Because, you see, Avon unveiled this new thingy at the DSEI 2023 convention, and I just wanted to record some thoughts on it. As a disclaimer, uh, we don't have a lot of photos or footage of this thing, uh, and so a lot of what I'm going to be saying is just pure speculation. So some of this could get proven wrong in the future, I'm just making my best guess based on what I see. So the big question for today is what actually is this thing? Uh, Avon is calling it the Modular Integrated Tactical Respirator, or MITRE, but for additional details, I'm going to refer to what a news article on this thing has to say, and I will link that article in the description. Avon Protection is showcasing a new type of APR system for operational applications that don't require full seaburn protection. The Modular Integrated Tactical Respirator, or MITRE, concept is a low-burden, high-performance respiratory protection system. With a non-traditional integrated low-profile filter, MITRE is built around a next-generation positive pressure goggle, with a novel integration design that enables the wearer to don the mask without removing their helmet. Marketing jargon aside, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. This is a respirator meant for particulate threats, with helmet integration like what is seen on the Avon HMK150 or the Ops Core Soder. But, more interestingly, it has a removable positive pressure goggle system. Now, what I believe Avon means by this is that there is actually some sort of low-profile papper with filter integrated into the mask. On the left side of the mask in the video that we're seeing, you can see this weird tube or wire thing coming off of the goggles. It appears to lead to something black mounted on the back of the helmet, which I believe is part of this same unit. The closest thing I can kind of compare this to is that old CB Prism concept mask, even though it's not even really similar, just in that like their air flows over the head from the back of the mask, although this isn't a papper. So admittedly, that is kind of a pointless comparison, but I still thought I'd make it. Anyhow, if we look at the front, you get to another set of interesting features. Not only can you see the clip system for the goggles on the top there, which we'll talk about more later, but you can also see that there is a proper voice emitter, not like the speech cone type of thing that the S10 uses, or like the exhale valve is the voice emitter, like the you know, M50, uh, but this has an actual voice emitter. Alongside that, it has a separate exhale valve that's pointed downwards. Because of this, it seems that Avon is actually doing what I hoped they would do. When the XM55 was being developed, Avon did it on that mask as well, which I was really hoping would be a sign that they were moving away from the old British design doctrines, where the exhale and speech transmission assemblies are just one assembly right on the front of the mask so you can't drain moisture, over to an American doctrine where the exhale valve is separate and pointed downwards, allowing for passive moisture drainage. That's what I was really hoping they would do, but with the apparent cancellation, I'm not 100% sure of that, of the XM55 program, I was kind of losing hope that they would do that. However, with the MITRE, I think they are actually doing that, so that's exciting. Anyways, back to the front of this thing, you can see that it's got a clip right in the center of there. It's right on the nose. And that seems to be the only point where these goggles actually connect to the mask. If you look on the sides, uh, it's got separate straps. So I think that you're going to be able to disconnect it at the nose and then pull it up and put it on your helmet. Personally, I think that the fact this thing has removable goggles is entirely where they're getting the modular part of the name from. I'm just not sure if this thing's actually going to be dual filter. I think this is going to be something like the FM53, where most of them are single port only, and they're manufactured either left-handed or right-handed. And I think what we're seeing on these masks that we've been seeing in the videos and pictures is just some form of vestigial stock that is being used as a mounting point for the head harness. And at this point, I'm sure a lot of you guys might be asking what the actual point of this thing is. 
Originally, I thought this was going to be some sort of Sodor competitor, but I actually don't believe that anymore, because the mission is a bit different. While the Sodor is meant to be worn from the start of the mission to the end of it, pretty much, the Mitre seems to be more of a reactive respirator for uh, surprise particulate threats, in the same way that you would carry a gas mask on your hip in case a poison gas was suddenly deployed. Now, we're not going to know for sure if that's its purpose until Avon gives us more information specifically on their intended use case for this thing, but that's just what I think it is. Honestly, I'm a bit concerned about this thing because it's a bit out there when it comes to mask design. And because of that, it might be a little bit difficult to convince military organizations that this thing is actually worth it, especially when its competitor is just, you know, like a gas mask with a particulate filter on it. But this thing does have some pretty clear advantages, like if you carry it with the goggles mounted on your head and the respirator in some sort of pouch, this thing could be very, very compact to store. However, if you had night vision, you wouldn't be able to actually tuck that up onto your head, so you would have to wear the goggles on your face at all times or put them in a separate carrier. Another advantage is the fact that you don't have to take your helmet off to put it on. Depending on how that donning system works, that could actually increase the speed at which you can put this thing on. My guess as to how you would speed don this thing is you would wear the goggles mounted on your helmet, and then, well, you put your mask on, and then pull the goggles down and clip it onto the mask. That seems like it could be pretty darn fast. While I think this thing has the potential to be really good, I can also see some issues with the design. Firstly, I think this thing is going to be kind of a pain in the ass to clear. I have noticed this issue on other Avon masks, specifically the 53 when you've got the VPU on there, and I think this thing isn't going to be any different. It looks like the XL valve actually vents out of the mask on at least three sides of that frontal assembly, so it might be kind of a pain to actually wrap your hand around that and clear it. Of course, it might not be. Also, with the sheer size of the inlet on the filter, it might actually be kind of difficult to pressure test it. However, it should be emphasized that this is just a particulate respirator, so the worst thing that this is meant to really handle is tear gas. So, while I think that's a pretty big issue, well, both those things are a pretty big issue, you guys might not. All that aside, I do think this thing is pretty sick. I'm starting to kind of like it. At first, I was really hesitant about this thing, because like I said earlier, it is really out there, but I'm starting to see the promise in it. But that also kind of begs the question of, will I ever go and get one? And I'm not sure if I will. And mainly that's because I can't actually use it. You see, I'm an amateur historian that just focuses on gas masks, so I don't have like a super high-tech tactical helmet, you know, the type of thing that this is meant to integrate with. And that's assuming that these things ever actually make it onto the market, because you see, Avon is very clear, well at least that news article is very clear, that this is a concept. It could very well be that not enough interest will get shown in these things, and we'll just quietly stop hearing about them. But I really hope that doesn't happen, and I kinda don't think it will. I think that the Aethon name is going to carry this thing pretty far. But ultimately, we're gonna have to wait and see. And with that, I think I'm going to cut this video off here. There is some stuff that I didn't talk about, like the lack of a drinking system or a comm system, and that's just because I don't really know what to think about that yet. But let me know what you guys think, because your speculation is going to be just as good as mine, I think. And I'm sorry if you can hear construction going on in the background of this video. They just decided that right as I clicked the record button was the best time to start. Oh, also, the corrected English video is almost done, there's just a little bit I need to record, and then I gotta edit it. I'm sorry that's taken, what, like a month and a half to get a new video out, but I've just been very busy. Sorry about that. I've also got two uh, special, like, kind of side videos that are fully recorded. All that needs to be done is edit them, and I am still working on the thousand sub special. It might take a little bit, though, so I'm sorry about that. Anyhow, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one, whenever that is.